All right, so in this module, we're gonna take what we just learned about resolved and critical resolve shear stress and work an example. All right, so our example here is a single crystal of a material and um, that, that, uh, that crystal has a critical resolve shear stress of 20.7 megapascals. So that's our value of critical resolve shear stress. And uh, it's given us uh, angles and forces, or sorry, angles and stresses over here. And it wants us to know, it wants us to determine if we will have yielding. Uh, and if not, what stress would actually be required to cause yielding. And so we have a tensile stress of 45 megapascals, and then we have the two angles. So between the slip direction and the tensile axis and the slip plane and the cross-sectional area, those angles are 35 and 60 degrees respectively. So see if you can determine if this single crystal will yield based on the critical resolved shear stress given. If not, calculate what stress would actually be required. So uh, take a look at this question, see if you can answer it, and then come back and we'll work this one together and hopefully arrive at the same conclusion. All right, so now that you're back and you've had a chance to look at this question, let's go through and see if we can solve this. So our critical resolve shear stress, so tau CRSS is equal to 20.7 megapascals. We know from Schmidt's law that our resolved shear stress is equal to the tensile stress uh, multiplied by the cosine of those two angles. And it's given in the previous uh, slide, you saw that the tensile stress uh, was given to us as 45 megapascals, as well as the two angles. So cosine of 35, cosine of 60. And again, if you got these flipped, um, it wouldn't actually matter, uh, just as a point, of, <laughs> a point of reference. So if you flip these, uh, it's not going to depend on that. Uh, so if we plug all that in, making sure to have the correct units for cosine when we punch that into our calculator, uh, we, we get that it's gonna be 45 times, and then the cosine factors are gonna give us 0.41. And so that's going to give us a resolved shear stress of 18.4. So let's kind of go back and look at what that means. So if we apply 45 megapascals of tensile stress to this bar for the plane and direction that we're specifying here, the resolved shear stress in that plane and in that direction is going to be 18.4. And we know that the critically resolved shear stress is 20.7 megapascals. So that means that our value of shear stress is less than that critical value. And therefore, we see that the applied stress is not enough to cause this crystal to yield. So that's the kind of the answer to this question is it's not going to cause yielding. So then the next part of the question is what will? And so for that, we kind of work backwards. So we know the critical resolved shear stress of 20.7, and we plug it in to Schmidt's law, and we solve for sigma. And in this case, we can we actually specify sigma y because at this point, it is in fact the yield stress, right? Because this is the point at which yielding occurs. And so we're basically solving for yield stress. So we've specified that here. And we're gonna use the same angles, obviously. And so we solve for sigma y, and that gives us, rearranging the expression, um, resolved shear stress, critical resolved shear stress over the cosine factor means 20.7 divided by that 0.41. And that means that we'd have to apply 50.4 megapascals of tensile stress to initiate slip in that slip system, right? So this value or higher will cause slip to occur, and therefore 50.4 megapascals is the yield strength for this particular system, slip system, and material. So anything higher than that 50.4 would initiate yield. And so that's the kind of question, um, and that's what we're, that's what we're wanting to use this result, concept of resolved shear stress 
for is to see when slip will occur at what stresses and forces.